Καλησπέρα σε όλους. Τι όμορφη νησία. <laughs> Τους έχω προετοιμάσει. So, I introduce myself. I am Stefano Vafiatis and I feel so privileged because probably I do the most beautiful job in the world, which is yacht designer. So actually, since 12 years after my degree in architecture, I am designing and then supervising the building of boats. But let's start. I would like today to introduce you some important concept of yacht design that are not well known in the public. So, this is me on a boat, and right next to me is my father. He is the founder of the studio. Many times during my career, I have been told that I should not mention him, but in my opinion, this is completely wrong. Because if today I am something and I am a professional, I owe to him and especially to many of his lessons. One of the most important lessons that he gave me was that design, and especially yacht design especially, is a dialogue. It's a dialogue between the designer, the client, the owner, partners, and, in my case, also family, so between me and my father. But, even more important, in this dialogue, you have to listen carefully, your client, his desires, your task, more than speaking. So first you listen, then you digest, you metabolize, and after that you start sketching, sketching like crazy for hours, for days, and for months. And this process leads to a good design and to a good final product, a beautiful yacht floating in the beautiful waters of Greece. But let's go on. Let's speak about my roots and my heritage. I am half Greek, half Italian. I was born in Rome, raised in Rome, but I come to Greece every month for my job, business, for pleasure in the summertime. And I love my Greek roots and I feel Greek, completely Greek. So, this is the Polycletus Dorifus. It's one of the most important statues ever sculpted by, by Polycletus. Why it is so important? Because it introduced one very important concept of the Greek culture, the canon. What is the canon? The canon, basically, is a mathematical rule applied to the proportions of a sculpture or architecture, or it can be design of a product of mankind to recreate the beauty of nature and the harmony of nature. So in order to make something looking beautiful as nature, the Greeks, the ancient Greeks, they developed these rules about proportions to make the perfect, in this case, human body. Many other cultures developed mathematical proportions, like for example the Egyptians, to make something proportioned and well designed. But the Greeks did it on the human body, and in my opinion that is crucial and fundamental, because in both human body, human, ergonomic, is fundamental and crucial. Here we see the amazing Belvedere Torso, one of the most beautiful statues that is in Rome, but comes from a late classical Greek timing. Uh, this statue, what I can say, is so beautiful because it looks so natural, dynamic and relaxed at the same time. And is the perfect, the perfect teaching from the Greek culture. 
putting the man in the center of the world, like in this case, and in the center of the universe. And this is exactly what we do on boats. On boats, we put men, in our case the owner, who starts the construction, who has the dream of building a yacht, we put this man and his dream in the center of his world and the world. So it becomes the most important thing. But not only, also functionality is very important. And as I said before, ergonomics. So the relationship between things, objects, uh, equipments and men. That's another amazing drawing. This is the Vitruvian Man by Leonardo da Vinci, a small artist. And uh, very important is that during the Renaissance and in many eras after the Greeks, all these rules, all these canons that I mentioned before, they were not lost. They were not lost thanks to a manual. This manual was made by a Roman architect. This Roman architect called Vitruvius made the manual of classic architecture. And if today we know almost everything, many things about Greek culture in design, sculpture, architecture, etc., etc., we owe this to Vitruvius because he transcripted all of the rules. And Leonardo da Vinci, this amazing artist praised him with the Vitruvian Man. Another masterpiece, the La Conte. You can see the La Conte in the Vatican Gardens, in, always in Rome. And uh, this is a big sculptural group. And this composed, uh, if you see well, from so many different things, so many different objects. Uh, the child of the priest La Conte, the snake, how the, uh, how the, the fabrics soften. It's so beautiful and natural, and it's the perfect metaphor of what yacht design is and should be. It's a controlled complexity made of many different, small, detailed, refined elements that live in an overall harmony, sense, news, as to mention today's theme. So there is a news, a mind, that controls everything. In my case, uh, is the designer, but not only. I'm not the only protagonist. And, uh, and this mind controls design, in my case, and creates something that has harmony. So, you see. Boats, they are composed by thousands of small different elements. Hull, superstructure, railings, glass, interior spaces, exterior decks, uh, mast, navigation equipment, engine room. If you take every single item apart from the general overview, from the general news of the yacht and you put them away, they are still a masterpiece themselves, like La Conte. If you take uh, one of the children, still is uh, a masterpiece. But all together, they're living in, in a, such a beautiful harmony that they reach a climax. This is the starting point of the design of a yacht. It is so called the general arrangement. And his acronym is GA. So, General Arrangement, acronym, simply GA. The GA is one of the most important documents that we have in yacht design. It's the starting point. So, it's basically like a plan, like a layout of different levels. We start from the lower deck, main deck, upper deck, up to the top, of the yacht, and we study carefully in the GA the flows on board, how people they behave on board. Uh, we study the interaction, very important, with 
crew by guest. And this is crucial because uh, crew operations, uh, they have to be completely hidden. So unless the owner or one of his guests uh, requests the presence uh, or to see what the crew they are doing, uh, they should be almost uh, invisible. So we study the flow, the spaces, what uh, there should be on board. So the specification, what the clients want, he does want a spa, hammam, gym, a salon, upper salon. He wants a cinema, a massage room. And this is not so simple because there are so many things today on yachts. They're so complex that it's not easy. You can lose track of them. So for this reason, we make the GA. Then, after the GA, we do the second phase, which is the profile. The profile is more similar to what we said just before. It's more similar to the Greek canons, uh, more similar to sculpture, because in the uh, profile we do the volume balancing of the yacht. So actually we balance the volume and we try to make something nice and appealing to the human eye. So the GA, it is the starting point. But it's not the ending point, because on the profile we check the aesthetic, aesthetic feasibility of whatsoever in the GA. So in the GA there is like a space planning, and in the profile there is like more the design, the sculpting of the yacht. So for this reason it's more similar to Greek architecture and sculpture. If we have a beautiful, and functional GA and a beautiful and appealing profile, if they correspond, if they correspond, we will get beautiful shapes and a beautiful three-dimensional volume of the yacht, like in this case. Another beautiful lesson learned by our predecessor, the ancient Greeks, the emphasis. Also the emphasis is very important uh, on yachts because uh, on profile generally we try to completely avoid straight lines because on yachts as for example on columns a straight column with the same section on the base and then on top would look wrong odd for the distortion of the human eye the human perspective so if the Greek in the Parthenon they made a straight column and not a bumpy, a curved one, the top would look like a palm tree, like opening like a flower, uh, an undesired effect. So on yachts, we try to avoid as much as can straight lines. Even, even the decks of yachts are bumped, this is called the camber, to make the water overflowing out. So nothing is really flat, even though it looks, but there is always a slight curvature on boats. So then finally, we arrive to the third phase, which is the 3D model of the yacht. The 3D model is driven by the GA and the profile. We make projections of two, and we slowly create surfaces in the three-dimensional view. We can have a three-dimensional object made by hand, a model, a scaled model, so something physical, like 140 the size of the real yacht, and then we can have also a digital model, which is the most common today, the most common practice, with softwares, uh, CAD softwares, uh, NURBS softwares, uh, we can create something that is very similar to a virtual reality. In this phase of the three-dimensional study, we also go deeply in details and we shape all of the yacht with uh, and together the guidance of the owner and his desires. And we try to make something always appealing, nice, in the same concept, in the same overall concept 
of the original idea of the yacht. So we recreate the Laconte metaphor, all many different details and parts, uh, railings, uh, glasses, uh, uh, portholes, uh, uh, spring mass, uh, in order to uh, create something organic and harmonic uh, at the same time. Then, finally, the yacht is almost complete, but not the yacht itself. The design of the yacht is almost complete because then, from ideal, we go real. First of all, very important, on yachts, there are no side A and no side B. So it is not like a building that has a beautiful facade and then the backyard, the back part. Yachts, they have to be appealing from every possible perspective. And this is also something Greek. It's the theory of the glimpse that we discovered and we learned from the various discobolo of Miron and all the other discobolo sculpt. So, as I said, from ideal to real, because yacht design is a very pragmatic discipline, and finally, after three years of construction and more than 200 of the best craftsmen and the best craftsmanship in the world, from 200 up to 300, 400 people involved, we arrive to the final yacht launched in water. So usually yachts, after three years are launched, we give a beautiful party, the owner is happy, and then finally the owner departs with this yacht. And his dream, from a single man point of view, becomes collective, especially during the construction. There is so much passion in a construction of a boat, and I can say is a shared passion throughout a vast group of people. Moreover, I would like to add a concept that is very important in my mind. Yachts are crucial, fundamental, and a great resource for so many economies, like, for example, Greek economy with tourism, new builds, refits, and also for the Italian co co economy, but also for many other economies around the world. So it's not just uh, an egocentric uh, thought uh, or product, uh, something stolen from the society, but it's also something uh, given back to the society. So, thank you. I hope you enjoyed my presentation. I'm Stefano Raffiadis. Mm -hmm.